Hey gang, welcome to your fifth CSS tips and tricks tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a really cool CSS only pop-up. Alright then, so here's a quick preview of what we'll be making in this tutorial, a CSS only pop-up, so that when you click this button, boom, we get this pop-up and when you click on the cross, it disappears. And this, my friends, is built just using CSS only. No JavaScript whatsoever, which is really awesome. Now, I've gone with a Christmas theme since, you know, we're heading towards December and I'm starting to get a little bit excited. So that is the reason behind this image. And this is actually a sponsored video by Storyblocks, which is a really cool royalty-free stock imagery website. And royalty-free basically just means that you can download the image and you never have to worry about paying royalties. It's yours to keep and use forever. It's where I found this background image from right here. So if you want to download the same one or a different one, you can head on over to storyblocks.com forward slash YouTube. The link is going to be in the description box down below. So you can go ahead, click that now and start downloading your own images. So this is Storyblocks and you can get all the stock images you can possibly imagine from here as well. They've got tons of high res photos, vectors, icons and loads more. And if you do sign up, you're going to be able to download anything from 400,000 images in their member library, which is really cool. They've got tons of really good imagery. And you're also going to save 60% on marketplace content as well. So they're offering you a seven day trial too, which is nice. So you can try it out for free and get access right away to all these cool photos, vectors and loads more. So the image I'm going to be using is this Christmassy gold image right here. So I'm going to just search for Christmas and gold. And hopefully we should see that on the first page. So if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to see right about here, this one. So if you click on that, they're going to offer you different resolutions. I've gone for this one in the middle, the one megabyte one, and I've downloaded that. So you go ahead and do the same thing. And if we open up Photoshop now, you can see this is the design I've come up with. So I've just used this as the background image and I place this text and my little ninja icon at the top as well. So I'm going to save out this image now and I'm going to see you in the text editor. All right then, so I've gone ahead and opened up a new folder called CSS Only Pop-Up in Atom. And I've got this pop-up inside this folder as well that I've created. Now I've also got an index.html file right here. And there's a little bit of code in there at the minute, but not much. Uh, there's just a head with a title and a link to this style sheet, which I'll open up in a minute. And in the body, we have a comment here. This is where we're going to put our pop-up code and a comment here to say normal page code. So this is where our normal page content would be. All the HTML for our normal page, right? So I've just got a H1 and a P tag with some lorem ninja ipsum in there at the minute. And it looks something like this. Okay, so just a basic HTML page at the minute. Now, the style for this is coming from this styles.css file, just two rules in here at the minute. A body with a background of a light gray. We've stripped out the margin, set the font family, the font size and the color of the font. Then the wrapper, which is this thing right here, which is containing all of our normal page content. And all that does is keep it within a central column of 960 pixels. It sets the margin of 10% top and bottom and auto left and right, aligns the text to the center and gives the text a line height of two M's. So this is all really basic stuff at the minute. So the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and create this pop-up HTML. So the first thing we need to do is create some kind of surrounding element, which is going to act as an overlay. So remember when we had a look at that pop-up, we had a gray kind of semi-transparent overlay on the whole page. We want to create that div first of all. So we'll say div and this is going to have a class of pop-up. So this is a generic class whereby if you have multiple pop-ups, you could give them all this class of pop-up, right? So we can style all the pop-ups the same way. And then we just have different content within each different one. So we also want to give this an ID because that will specify its uniqueness if you do have several different pop-ups on a page. And this one is going to be called Xmas hyphen pop-up. So this right here is serving as our overlay, if you like. It's going to cover everything on the page and mask it with a semi-transparent gray. OK, so it kind of fades out the back of the page a little bit. Then we want our actual pop up content to appear in the middle right here. So within this div, we need to create that pop up content. So let's do another div and give this a class of pop up hyphen content. And inside here, we're going to do an image because we want our image, this pop up image to appear inside it. 
So image source is equal to popup.jpg. And we'll give this an alt as well and set that equal to Xmas hyphen sale. And that will do. Okay. And down below that, what I want to do is an anchor tag, which is going to be the little cross in the pop-up so that when you click on that cross, then it's going to close the pop-up, right? So we'll get say a class is equal to close. And then inside this, we'll place a little X like that. All right. So now we've got our pop-up right there and it's not going to look like much on the page at the minute. It looks terrible in fact, but we're going to style this in a second. But before we do that, I also want to create a button down here and this is the button that we need to click when we want to open up the pop-up. So A and then href is equal to something and we're going to fill this in later because this is going to be the crux of what is controlling our pop-up. Then we'll give this a class of button. All right, so we'll style that in a second in the CSS. I'm just going to say show pop up for the text. So let's save this now. And we've pretty much done our HTML. We're going to come back to this later on. And also this one, I'll place a href in here because this is going to control the functionality of closing the pop up. Um, but we'll leave it there for now and we'll go to the styles to start styling this pop up up a little bit. So underneath the wrapper, I want to say button. We'll style that first of all. And this button has two T's and inside I want to say the border is going to be three pixels solid and one 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 which is a really dark gray almost black. We're also going to give this a padding of 10 pixels and color is going to be the same as the border which is one one one. We're also going to say text decoration is none to strip out the underline. So if I save this now, let's just view it. We see that button down there, which is pretty cool. All right then, so underneath the button, I'm gonna say pop up. So this is the pop up container right here. And remember, this is gonna serve as our overlay, our kind of veal of semi-transparent gray that is gonna cover the whole page, kind of fade it out a little bit, all right? So this pop up, we want to take up the whole width of the page and we want it to be fixed in position so it never moves. So we'll say position first of all is fixed and then width is going to be 100%. Height is going to be 100%. And also we want to say the left is going to be zero. So it starts at the top left and top is zero as well. All right. Now the background I said is going to be semi transparent. So Let's do RGBA, which means we can have an alpha channel inside the parenthesis. So we'll say 0, 0, 0 for black. And then we're going to say 0 0.6, right? Which means that it's semi-transparent. If this was 1, it would be fully um, opaque, meaning not transparent at all. And if it was 0, it would be fully transparent. So let's save that. And it makes the background look like this. It just kind of fades out a little bit so that the pop-up pops out, if you like. It's more noticeable. So that's the background sorted, the overlay. The next thing I want to do is style up the actual content inside the pop-up. So this dude right here. And in fact, first of all, let us use this ID to target it. So we'll say hash sign, then Xmas pop-up. And then inside that, we want the pop-up hyphen content. Yeah, makes sense. So the first thing I'd like to do is set this to have a width of 600 pixels, which is the width of the image that I created, a height also of 600 pixels, and a margin of 100 pixels top and bottom, and then auto left and right. So that means it's going to bring it down by 100 pixels. Okay. So let's just save this for the time being, and we can see that pop up now sitting in the middle of the page. That is much better. That is where a pop up typically would be, right? All right, cool. So the next thing I'd like to do is set this position as relative. And the reason I'm doing that is so that we can absolutely position this cross within it. OK, so we're setting this as the containing element of the cross position relative so that when we absolutely position this it's positioned relative to this. Right. So we can position it in the top right easily. All right. So position relative. And finally, I'm going to say border is five pixels solid and FFF, which is white, just makes it pop out a little bit more, I think. Cool. 
So now we've styled that, let's move on to this little thing down here, this cross. And that is going to be used to close the pop-up. So we'll say close, and then inside, position is going to be absolute. And we want to position this in the top right, so I'll say top is 5 pixels, and the right is 5 pixels. Let's take a look at that. Yep, that looks about right. Now, I want to set this to have a background of 222, which is kind of like a dark grey. And I also want to give this a border radius to make it into a circle. So I'll say border hyphen radius is going to be 50%. It's going to make it into a full circle in a minute when we give it a width and a height. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say the border is 3 pixels solid and it's going to be white. So F, F, F again. And the color inside of the cross is going to be white, which is F, F, F. We're also going to strip out the underline of the cross. So let's say text hyphen decoration is none. Save that. Have a look what it looks like so far. Okay, looking better. We just want to sort that width down and basically the shape of the circle. So let's first of all say line height is going to be zero and what that is going to do is strip out the height of the whole container because we're saying the line height of this x right here is zero zero pixels in height so it strips out the height and then we can specify the width and the padding so that it looks like a circle so padding first of all i'm going to say is nine pixels at the top zero left and right and 11 pixels at the bottom so let's save that okay we get the height back and now i'm going to say the width is 20 pixels so save that and we finally just need to say text align is in the center so it centers that x okay looking good so now we have that cross and we have all the pop-up styled looking pretty good and we just want to basically control this functionality of when you click on the cross then we hide the pop-up and when you if we can in fact display this as none so pop-up display as none because by default we don't want it to display on the page so when you click on this button right here it's going to show the pop-up so how the hell are we going to do that well first of all we're going to use a pseudo class and this pseudo class is called target so have you ever used an anchor tag and then specified a pound symbol in here and then the id of something so for example this thing right here okay now what would happen if i clicked on this well let's have a look if I go into the browser and say show pop-up, click on it, you see this URL right here? It adds on that pound symbol. Okay, so this right here, this ID, this element has become a target element, right? So as soon as we click on this, this element becomes the target. And we're going to use the target pseudo class. So what we're going to say is when the pop-up becomes the target, then we're going to display it. Make sense? So let's say pop-up. And then pseudo class target and this is going to display as block so does that make sense so now you can see when this is the target this is displaying but when we get rid of this it's not displaying when we click on it it becomes the target again and it's displaying as block all right so when the pop-up is the target it displays as block when it's not the target then it displays as none by default so now we've got that button working so that when we click on the button it shows but we need to get this working so when we click on that it doesn't show and in fact it already did and that's because the, the href is nothing at the minute but if we just add a pound symbol inside that when we refresh over here show pop up now if we click anywhere else on the pop up then it doesn't work but if we click on the cross because the target now is becoming this and the pop up is no longer the target then it doesn't show. Does that make sense? So there we go, my friends. That is how you make a very simple CSS only pop-up. As usual, all the code for this is going to be on my GitHub repository, and I'm going to leave that down below as well. So if you want to copy and paste from there, feel free to do so. And finally, guys, if you enjoy these videos, please, my friends, do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really means a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next one.